Okay, as uh, Pastor Matt had announced, we, are, uh, we returned from our mission trip to Ghana and we're giving a report, uh, myself and the team, on what happened during that trip, not only um, really in ministry that we conducted, the Lord conducted through us, but also um, ministry that God did in our individual and personal uh, lives. And before I even start, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, dear Lord, for this day. And I thank you, dear Lord, uh, for the privilege it is to serve you. Dear Lord, we, uh, we thank you for the salvation that you have given us through your Son, Jesus Christ. And the, the privilege and honor to bear that name, to be witnesses unto him. Dear Lord, to herald your gospel here and around the world. I ask that you would bless, dear Lord, as we share what you did in Ghana. Dear Lord, how it touched our lives and the lives of others. And may you be glorified in everything that is said, everything that is seen. And may, dear Heavenly Father, you ignite a fire in all of our souls that we, dear Lord, would live for you in the world we find ourselves and that we would be light and salt, dear Heavenly Father, proclaiming the truth of your word and the gospel of Jesus Christ. For we pray in Jesus' most precious name, and all God's people said, Amen. Now, in just a second, I'm going to show you, uh, we're going to show a little video uh, that gives you some pictures about an idea of what we did um, for the two weeks. And then I'll be having some folks that are going to be sharing testimonies. But let me give you, I wrote down just a couple of things sort of to give you um, an overall understanding of what happened. We just returned from 16 days in Ghana, which is in West Africa. And it's a trip that really we're planning, I have been planning for over two and a half years. Uh, it was supposed to take place last summer, but something happened last year that sort of changed everybody's plans, all right? Uh, that thing called COVID. And so we were not able to do, all right, the trip that we had planned. Uh, we did go in November, though, all right? And, uh, but it was a different trip for a different purpose where we saw God work uh, there, but this was a trip that we had planned over two years ago. We had sent over uh, supplies that were shipped by barrel. And by the way, if we would probably ship those supplies later during all the stuff that's going on, I don't know if they still would have uh, made it there. So we praise God for that. Uh, the trip was to happen in the summer of 2020. I had the team all set, all right, with members from here uh, at the church had to be postponed. Uh, at that time. The theme of the trip and the theme that we uh, used this year was divinely designed based on Psalm 139 verse 14, which I will praise the Lord for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are his works and that my soul knows very well. And we wanted to minister that to the boys and girls of the Mephibosheth Training Center. These are children that are severely handicapped that uh, you are, your life is no mistake. God has a plan for you. God has a purpose for you. God sees you. God knows you. God loves you. And God wants to use you. And so we uh, uh, carried on uh, that theme this year as we would minister to the children and the churches uh, in the area where we went. Now, as I said, we were able to go this year. We had a team of 11 all set, but one bailed out on me. No, I... I, I I, you know, I, I, I love the kid, all right, uh, Lily. Lily Shaver was all set to go. Lily went with us in November, all right? Tremendous, tremendous blessing. But again, showing how really God, he works all things, you know, together for good. Uh, Lily came in contact with somebody with COVID. And of course, if you would test with COVID when you went to Africa, they had, a, just figure this, all right, a mandatory uh, isolation in Africa for two weeks. You don't particularly want to choose that, all right? And so Lily did what I would do. Ah, maybe I won't go, all right? And so Lily stayed home, but I know her prayers were with us. And uh, by the way, she shared some good news, though, in between that time that uh, she is engaged. So I, I rejoice in that. But we missed you, Lou. I want to say that, all right? But uh, your compadre, Mimi, all right, she filled in well, all right? But there was a team of uh, 10 who actually uh, went. Uh, we saw God's hand not only in ministry, 
but in travel. That any more, the hardest thing about going on a trip is not the missionary trip itself. It's getting there and turning around and getting home because of all the protocols. Um, we were flying from RDU up to JFK and JFK right over to Accra, Ghana. But of course, in flying at night in the summer in August in North Carolina, the weather is not predict. Well, it is predictable. There's going to be storms. So we got delayed quite a bit, but we were able to get off that plane, hustle at JFK, and we made our plane, all right, going to Accra. And so, uh, but it was close, and you know, you're wondering whether we're going to make it, but we did, all right. Uh, all our protocols were met. I think I've had, I don't know how many COVID tests, all right, but everyone tested uh, negative. Uh, we, nobody had to be duct taped in their seat on the airline. We all behaved, all right, and we made it over there. On the way back to the airport, uh, the, the vans, you got to understand, when you're in Africa, I mean, they're all vehicles about 25 years old, all right, um, that ended up breaking down, uh, the clutch went, and you're watching people, you know, tear pieces of rag to make washers, spacers, in order to fix the parts of your car, right? And then you figure, well, that car is going about 80 miles an hour, <laughs> and you're in it. But guess what? Even though it broke down twice, all right, Kevin, we made it right to the airport. We're able to get on the plane. But I'm saying God took care of everything, all right? We take a lot of things for granted, but God meant that. Now, why in Ghana? We minister to the children of the Mephibosheth uh, Training Center. You're going to see some of that. We did vacation Bible school for children in the area. There were protocols, all right, with COVID, so we weren't able to have as many kids. But we still had, you know, uh, probably about 700 kids in that Bible school. And we, you know, we have 10 workers, basically, uh, and you're calling that small. But we, had to, we got to minister to those children, uh, ended up juice crackers and everything else. We did a program at a village church, very poor church. We were able to distribute clothing and uh, food over there. We conducted a week of youth meetings. When I was over there, right, and it's very interesting, that the pastor comes to me, I, I want you to do a week of youth meetings, all right? And they had literally 100 to 150 young people, all right, every night. And so I had to tell a lot, I, I would go like to Kevin, Kevin, guess what? The pastor says, uh, you're, you're preaching, you're teaching tonight, all right? You're on, all right? And uh, I had to end up to going uh, to all the different team members, and they all... Uh, participated in that, and we saw man, tremendous, tremendous uh, ministry to the young people there uh, of that church. Uh, we distributed clothing, uh, thousands of outfits to boys and girls in that area. Uh, we distributed supplies to local churches, and we were able to buy new school uniforms for all the school children uh, in the Mephibosheth Training Center. A lot of the kids there. I mean, their, their outfits were in bad, bad shape. So we were able to do that. Uh, I would say this. I've, I've traveled many times to Africa with many different teams. I have not traveled, and I mean this, on any trip for an extended trip to Ghana with a team that displayed more Christian character and unity than this trip. All right? Uh, I, I didn't hear one complaint, whether it was food or anything. And uh, I would say that church, your prayers were heard. Um, God gave them the strength and the unity, and God used them a tremendous way. And I want to say before I show the video, I want to give a special thank you to Padres and Bible Church, Pastor Matt, all the different people of the church for your generous support. But see, when you're in ministry, and if I get enough time, I'll share, it's never about a me, but it's about a we, all right? And uh, we were able to minister, all right? And God using us through your support and your prayers. And uh, you made this possible. And I want to say a special thank you. Now, to give you a little visual idea of what we did, Diane, it was a tough week, tried to put together a video. She got it done. And I think it's about three minutes. And uh, we're going to show that at this time.
deeper and wider than you and I will ever understand. Thank you, Diane, for putting that together for us. And you saw all the different team members. Now, what I want to do, um, you know, ministry isn't just about us going, you know, somewhere and uh, doing something. But the Lord uh, does the work in, in our own lives, in our own hearts. And uh, what we did when we took the team over and um, we conducted, uh, you know, the Bible school and ministry, we had to divide our team into three teaching teams. We had an auditorium team and then three teaching teams that would teach the kids. And um, I'm going to have somebody from one of those uh, teams, uh, three, are going to give testimony. Jerry and Dina Sneed, they probably had the largest classes. You had about, how many was in each individual class you had? So that, and we would consider that, you know, small, but it ends up that they had the kids outside. So Jerry, I'm going to ask if you would come and share. Um, um, him and Dina did a tremendous, tremendous job uh, in reaching uh, those boys and girls. So, Jerry? Praise the Lord. Uh, Amen. Okay, I just want to thank all of you for your, your prayers and support for us. Uh, it was just Is such that... a blessing. I want to thank you all for your prayers and your support for us. Uh, we really felt your prayers there because, uh, you know, we had the opportunity to share the gospel, as, as uh, Pastor Bill said, with hundreds of kids. And it was just a, just a joy uh, each, each day to get to share with them uh, the gospel of Christ. We had a little beach ball uh, thing with the different colors, and, and we talked with them about what the colors meant as, as far as how that relates to the, the gospel. We did that every day, and we had many opportunities to pray with them to receive Christ. And, you know, the Lord knows how many of those uh, were genuine conversions, you know, but I believe it was probably in the hundreds, you know. Uh, and even at the youth nights, every night, uh, the opportunity was given for people to come to know the Lord, and, and there was a, a good response on those nights as well. So, you know, the Lord really answered those prayers. And uh, I also uh, want to praise the Lord for the unique team that he put together. Uh, we didn't really know most of the people on the team other than Pastor Bill. Even even uh, Mimi and Kevin, uh, we had not really gotten to know them, but we got to know them over this trip. And I'll tell you, uh, you know, Kevin was a real blessing. He, he was always he had these little one-liners with his uh, roommate or uh, his fellow teaching partner, Ray, who was quite a character. And I think they were a great uh, team Amen. together. But uh, Kevin also shared a, a great testimony. I won't take away from what he's going to share, but... Uh, he, he shared how the Lord has worked in his life in a powerful way, and, and that ministered to so many of the young people there. And, and then Mimi, you know, God bless her. She was, she's just a mature beyond her years, you know, and, and she acted like she was an old pro at it, you know. She was just, 
full of joy and energy and, and the, the love of the Lord and the kids just loved her. And, and so uh, it was a joy just to get to know all of the team and, and work with them and just be a part of, part of that. And, you know, another impression I had was just how the, the Ghanaian people just really seem to be overcomers. You know, at first we were kind of sad, you know, we'd look around and a lot of the, the buildings there, the, the way that they do things is, is the, uh, uh, they'd start a building and, and they'd, they have cash and carry there. So, you know, they'd, they'd start to build the building and, and then they'd go as far as the money would go and then they'd have to stop and, and just uh, have to wait until they get more money, you know, to continue the building. And it seemed like 50 to 75% of the buildings were just kind of halfway done. You know, and it looked kind of sad, but then we got to thinking about that. We, we thought, you know, the Lord gave us a perspective on that, that these people are dreamers, you know, that, that they have a vision. You know, they'll start something and they have a vision that they're going to be able to complete it someday. Amen. You know, and I thought, you know, that, that's, a, that's really neat how the Lord kind of revealed that. And I just saw it in, in the, uh, the kids at the Mephibosheth Training Center, just how they, they love each other like a big, big family together. And, and, you know, they have challenges that you and I will, will never face, but, you know, they have a love of life and smiles on their faces and, and they help each other out. You know, the ones that, that can't use their arms, other ones will help to feed them, you know, in the, the meal times and stuff like that. And they just, they love each other and uh, they do for themselves and they learn how to adapt. And it was just an inspiration to me to, to be around that and, and, and see that, you know, it made me feel kind of sorry for how I complain sometimes about things. And I was really impressed with the praise and the, the worship and the prayer times. Uh, just, they had such joy in their praise and worship. See these, you know, hundreds of arms, you know, waving in the air, the kids just really getting into the, into the, uh, the worship, the praise and worship. And, you know, one thing they did in all of their, their services, especially the, the youth services at night, was they always started with a time of, of uh, prayer. And, um, then they ended with a time of prayer. And some of you probably heard, I, I fell down on a Friday and we were doing one of the songs and I don't always listen to my wife, you know, when she tells me to do stuff. And she told me, don't, don't be dancing around, you know, like trying to act like you're a young person. <laughs> and I didn't listen to her. So we were doing Father Abraham and I was doing, you lift your, your right leg up and jump around on your left leg. And my knee gave out and I fell down and, <laughs> you know, well, anyway, uh, the Lord was good to me. Uh, thankfully, Andrea, uh, the uh, Pastor Joe's wife, she's a she's a physical therapist, and she had a cane there <laughs> to, to help me. So I had to use that, hobble around with that for a couple of days. But you know, I was talking about prayer, and at the end of one of the prayer services, I remember Pastor Joe said, "You know, you're not going to leave here the way you came in." And he said, "You know, if, if you have a need for healing, uh, you need to reach out and receive that from the Lord." And so. That uh, I think it's like Saturday night. Right after that, I you know, I felt like the Lord was saying, "Just stand up," you know, and I I not wanted to stand up, you know, because because of the knee giving out, and I just stood up without the cane at that moment and and prayed for God's healing. And actually, by Monday, when we had to do the next round of BBS mm -hmm. with all the you know hundreds of kids in the community, I didn't have to use the cane anymore. So I praise Amen. God for that. Amen. You know. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> So the last thing I just want to share real quickly is, is just uh, Pastor Bill gave us the opportunity to share on one night a, about uh, 1 Timothy 4.12 where it talks about let no one despise your youth and, and uh, be an example of the Lord uh, in, you know, in, the, in the word and in, and, and uh, well, for, for us, we had to talk about being an example in the spirit and in faith. And uh, we had to share our testimony. And I shared a little bit about my college days and how I wasn't really following the Lord, you know, when I first went into college and, and that, that the Lord uh, used an incident in my life to show me uh, how, how to um, come back to him and put Jesus first in my life. And, that, and he got me plugged into a good, good Christian group there. And that's where I met my wife, Dina. And we, we both, you know, we'd made some mistakes in our past and we decided, we made a, made a decision that we're going to um, honor the Lord with our relationship and our dating relationship and we got to share some of the things that the Lord led us to do with these young people to help them that they can live a pure uh, relationship you know with, with the people that they date and so forth and then we also talked about um, how the Lord blessed us in um, our marriage and through a very difficult time that we went through when we lost a couple of babies to stillbirth 
And uh, the Lord had given Dina a psalm, Psalm 145, that talks about the Lord's faithfulness to us. And uh, God, God had given her a song. Now, I, I don't really like standing up here in front of talking to people a whole lot, and even less I like to sing, but Dina had uh, volunteered us to sing this song that the Lord gave. It was Psalm 145, and so we actually had the opportunity to sing that, and it was really well received, and, and uh, it was a blessing to us to be able to share Amen. it. Amen. And uh, even, even Pastor Joe had to sing the chorus several times again, you know, with the congregation. It was just such a blessing. But we just had a great time, and, and the Lord really moved. And thank you all for your prayers and your support. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jerry. See, I was figuring that I was going to take a cane, and I forgot to pack it. And I thought it was ironic that I thought I was going to be one with a cane, and that I saw Jerry walking around with it. All right? But God took care. Kevin, come on up. Kevin Bell was part of our team now. I really didn't know Kevin at all. I know his parents, and I got to know him over there, all right? Here's two things I know about Kevin. He loves coffee, right? And he's, and he's the only man I know who can eat faster than me, all right? That's all. <laughs> but special, special blessing. It's, fun. it's funny, on mission trips, when you serve together, God always brings people in your path that are special blessing, unanticipated. You were one of them. Well, Matt, Matt those lights are right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to start by saying I appreciate all the prayers of all of you here. I know many of you are praying specifically for me as well as the rest of the team. But, um, you know, this trip had a profound impact on my life. Uh, my adult life doesn't necessarily uh, reflect, you know, that of someone that would fly to Africa and share the gospel with uh, other people, but um, that's what God chose, and um, I'm just thankful that I had the opportunity to do that. Um, as Bill said, you know, our kind of our uh, phrase that we tried to preaching or beat into these kids heads every day was you know you're uniquely and divinely designed and uh, that you're not a mistake and through doing that I kind of uh, I kind of beat it into my own head um, you know because of you know things I've been through and uh, sin in my life and the, the negative consequences it's had it's uh, I've kind of struggled with with feeling you know like uh, like maybe some of these kids possibly have felt at some point. And, uh, you know, they were way more of a blessing to me than, than I could have ever been to them. Um, you know, a lot of times in our country, we, we like to draw lines and make you choose either, well, you're either for this or against this. And, um, you know, you have to pick a, pick a side. And the kids over there are just, it, they live in community and they love one another, like like uh, Jerry was saying. They help one another. Um, where one is lacking, the group will will uh, make up for that. And <clears throat> just the joy that they have every day um, was a huge teacher for me. What they're you know they appreciate the the simplest things, and uh, they don't take anything for granted. And you know, God really showed Himself to me in a lot of different ways. Um, mainly through the children and you know I was able to share my testimony on one of the youth nights and I had several kids come up to me afterwards and share some very personal things that they were dealing with in their life and just that there made the, made the trip worth it because you know if all the things I've been through I can share with somebody that has a positive impact then then it was all worth it and you know, God doesn't make mistakes. Uh, Amen. And I, you know, I, I'm just incredibly thankful that I had the opportunity to, to do this. And, um, you know, I, I thank the church for the support, Pastor Matt, all the prayers. Um, but, you know, I hear a lot of missionaries come back and they say, um, you know, I, I feel so blessed to live, live where I live. And, don't get me wrong, I feel incredibly blessed to live here and for everything that I do have, but, um, you know, I, we can learn a lot from, from the way that uh, 
how dependent these people are on God for, for everything. And I think with our, a lot of our blessings and our, uh, you know, our prosperity, we can lose sight of the fact that we are dependent on God for Amen. everything. And, um, you know, these people reminded me of that. And, uh, you know, I can only pray that I get to go back sometime. And, uh, you know, it's definitely a trip that I will remember the rest of my life. So mm. I'm very thankful I got, had the opportunity. Amen. Thank you, Kevin. God bless, Kevin. Now the youngest member of the team, Mimi Holland. God bless. All right. God orchestrated Mimi to come, all right, because she was the one with the energy leading the music, all right, and uh, nobody could keep up with her, all right? Everybody, all those kids knew the name, Mimi. <laughs> incredibly grateful to have gone on this trip. It was like, I don't even have the words to describe how incredible it is. And kind of like everyone else has been saying, like, of course we went there and of course the goal was to bless them and get them clothes and get them food and everything else. Oh my gosh, I'm shaking, I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they really did, they blessed us too. And it was really crazy because I prayed beforehand and I was like, Lord, I want you to work through me um, during this trip and I want to come back different. I want to come back with a different outlook on life. I want to come back having learned something. I don't want to just go and do it and go through the motions. I want to be closer to you after, after this trip. And the first couple days I was like, I don't really know what we're doing. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Am I supposed to like do something? Like <laughs> what am I supposed to do? But we finally fell into a groove and I understood what we were doing. Um, we started the BBS and I got to see all the kids and everything. I was still a little bit scared because I didn't know what they would think. Um, I didn't know like the right ways to interact, if there was wrong ways to interact and I just was kind of scared. But I just kept praying and I kept praying and I kept praying. And then finally like we just fell into this wonderful groove of understanding, especially after the first week, after the first week and seeing all the kids and just how much love and how much joy that they had for each other. Um, it was really kind of cool and I was so excited for the next week. Um, it was a little intimidating too because there were supposed to be like a lot more kids, like a lot more kids. <laughs> um, so it was really exciting. And one of the first days, like these kids, the program would start at like 1.30, right? For the village kids. And at 12.30, these kids would already be lining up at the door. Hundreds of kids just lining up at the door an hour early. How often do I show up like an hour late to places? <laughs> like, <laughs> these kids were an hour early just to come learn about God. And it was so incredible. And I have a video um, whenever you're ready to show you to see the joy that these kids had. They would come running, if you have the video. These kids were in the woods, and they heard the music start playing, and just, they swarmed. Hundreds of kids running up to the door, just to learn about God. And like, look at all their faces. They are all smiling and running. And there's more of them. Like, they just kept coming. <laughs> but the one thing that we, we all told them that they were fearfully and wonderfully made. All of their differences, all of their similarities, all of it was perfect because it was who God made them to be. But the one thing that all of these kids had in common was the joy and the love for the Lord and how much they wanted to be there. They wanted to be there. They wanted to learn. These kids were so attentive, and it was amazing to see how much they just focused and paid attention, and they wanted to learn more. They wanted, they memorized the verses. They dove right into it and wanted to know more about God, and they would come up to you and tell you the verses and sing the songs with you, and all of it was just, just to see the joy on their faces. And I pray every day now, I pray that the Lord would give me the joy of him, the way that these kids had. 
I pray that I would just have the joy of the Lord to be my strength, just like the joy of the Lord was the strength for these kids. Amen. Amen. Now, Mimi, I think she's running back to Campbell University. We have several young people at the church that have started their college careers. You may definitely uh, remember them. But again, a great blessing, uh, the team. What I'm going to ask this morning, I think I have 15 more minutes, all right? I passed her for a lot of years, so I got to say, all right, a couple things from the Word of God. I want you to turn, if you have your Bibles, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. What's a unique, every time I go on a mission trip, God speaks to me through His Word, all right? And um, it gives me uh, something. I'm going to share uh, with you, again, something God gave uh, to me. Uh, I'm a, this introspective type person that when I go on a trip, I'm always thinking, all right, why are you doing this, Bill? In other words, is it about making you feel good? Uh, what is, you know, ministry? And just asking all these uh, questions. And it was very interesting. God took me to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, which is... All right, about ministry being built on the right foundation to reinforce some truths in my life. Now, I'm going to go kind of quick, but I would challenge you as a believer, all right, to read these verses. Now, understand this all of us are called to ministry. It's not, you know, like 10 people go to Ghana, you know, there's something special. No, every one of us is called to ministry. You find throughout the Word of God verses go into all the world, preach the gospel to every living creature. Acts 1.8, Jesus said before he went up into heaven, you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the world. 2 Corinthians 5.20 says we are ambassadors for Christ. So all of us are to be involved in ministry. Now here's what God was dealing with me about over in Ghana. Much of what we call ministry is not real ministry. See, you can say it's ministry, and you can be very busy in the Christian life, and it really not be ministry, and not be something that is lasting, all right, spiritually. And that would pose the question, well, then what is true ministry? Because I'm asking myself, uh, I want to be here and actually do what God wants me to do, true ministry. What is true ministry? And he gave me these three thoughts. I don't have time to read, all right, all uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, but uh, here's the three thoughts, and I'll read some of the verses. The first thing is that true ministry, all right, is always conducted from a platform of spirituality, all right? True ministry always conducted from a platform of spirituality. You would say, well, pastor, aren't all Christians spiritual? No, all right? Uh, uh, unfortunately, all right, and all of us at one time in our life all right, we, we were not, quote, spiritual. See, I believe the natural tendency for all of us, all right, even when you're birthed into family of God, is to be what? Self-centered. Life is all about me. I'm, I'm going to go to a mission trip. I'm going to make sure that I'm going to be catered to my needs. In other words, I want something that is going to bless me. But everything in life is all about, would be about Bill. And, and we're all alike in this way. And that's what... Paul was talking about, notice what he says, starting in verse 1, and brethren, I could not speak to you as spiritual, all right? Now remember, this is a church. These are people in the church. And he says, you are not, I mean, this kind of a, you know, a, a negative way to address a congregation saying you're not spiritual, but you're carnal as the babes in Christ. I fed you with milk, not with solid food, for unto now you're not able to receive it, and even now you're still not able for you are still carnal, for where there is envy, strife, divisions among you are not carnal, and you behave like, what does he say, mere men. See, the natural tendency, again, is for all of us to be self-centered. And we all begin there, am I right? Everybody has kids. I mean, when you're raising kids, when I'm raising like our kids, we have seven toddlers, uh, they didn't just automatically, oh, I want to share all my toys. Oh, I got a bag of M&M's. Would you care for some? Would you? No, they, they know this word, mine, mine, do not touch. Man, you could you buy them a, 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 a order of French fries at McDonald's and just ask them for one fry. No. Wait a minute. I paid for those, right? 
but you're not getting because it is mine. I mean, that's where we all start. Am I right? Understand, even as Christians, all right, this is where we start. We all started there, all right? Carnal, self-centered, Christ into my life. God's going to bless me. God's going to do this, 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 make all my dreams come true. This is where we start, just like children. And growth as a Christian, all right, is moving from self-centeredness, carnality, to being centered on the body of Christ. If you read this, that's, that's what he's talking about. In other words, it's not about you, but it's about us. Like we're going to Ghana, the team. It's not about you, Bill, using these people, all right, to accomplish whatever you think is going to make you feel good, but it is us together. And uh, we need to understand this. True ministry, all right, only comes from a spiritual mindset I get to focus off myself. He says we're not to behave like mere men or not behave like those that are what? Unsaved. Unsaved people care about what? Themselves. See, we are here part of the family of God, all right, as we have moved into spirituality that we care for the body. And so, you know, the Lord is dealing with me, all right, ministry bill it's not focused on what you want to see done here, all right? It's not all about Bill, all right, what he's going to do. But you, it, it is from the platform of getting away from yourself and focus, all right, on, all right, the body of Christ. And uh, I, get, I had to ask myself, well, where am I on this path? Because let's really be honest, all right? None of us here, we're not at the end. Do not, don't, uh, none of us can say, well, I, I've reached the goal. I never think about myself. It's always about, I always think about Diane. I always think about the kids, the grandkids. It's nothing about me. I, I haven't got there yet. In fact, I don't even like to be serious and even think where on that line I am, all right? But uh, God was uh, dealing with me at where are you on that end? Because it was very interesting. At the church we were at, Mephibosheth Transformation Church, they have their motto, and the motto, all right, is transform your world by the word. Great motto, right? Transform your word, a world by the word of God. But as I thought of that, you know what God came to drive my mind? Before you transform any world, Bill, you better let the word of God transform you. All right? And that's what Paul is dealing with these people. Because understand, the people in the church are all busy. They are busy, busy, busy. And he says, it's for knowing. Because the platform that you're doing this ministry is carnality, not spirituality. And sometimes I think it's good for us, you know, to ask the Lord, would you shine a light? And most times we don't want to do this. That Psalm 139 has a verse that David says, search me, O God. So I, I, don't, I don't want nobody shining a flashlight all right, in the deep recesses of my life, but we need to ask that. So we got to remind ourselves, ministry is conducted from a platform of spirituality. Then the second thing as I was reading this that God was dealing with me about is that true ministry also is dealt in the context of the body of Christ, all right? Not the context of Bill, all right? Uh, when I did, started out in ministry, this is going back in, the, you know, going back in the 60s and 70s, when you were a pastor, everything was promoting you. Like if I put ads in the paper, it was Bill, H well, I had hair back then and everything, but it was Bill Hegedus' picture. If I gave out pencils, Bill Haggard is pastor. If I had church buses, my picture, you know, a name. And everybody, want, it was all about what? Hey, Bill, right? Because you, you like Bill, you come to Bill's church, right? But true ministry is not done in the context of me. It is done in the context of the body of Christ. And two thoughts as I was reading through this that God gave me. He says, we minister out of not who we are, but whose we are, all right? It's not who we are, but whose we are. Because you look at verse 23, all right, and he says, you are who? What does he say? Christ, all right? See, we got to recognize, you know, it's not about who I am, but who, whose I am. In other words, Christ is the head of the body. Uh, a little bit later in that same letter, he writes this, you are no longer your own. For you're bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit. Little s, that's dealing with emotions, that's dealing, 
you know, uh, uh, again, with your character, that's dealing with attitudes, that um, you are, are to really glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. In other words, that it, it ends up that I'm glorify Him, realizing everything I have is from Him. This is what he says in verse 5. Who then is Paul? Who is Apollos? But your ministers whom you believed as the Lord gave to each one. All right? It's really not who I am, but what I have been given. All right? This is what we're teaching the kids. See, we have this thing we want to compare ourselves, right? And if I'm different from somebody, that means I'm less. No, it doesn't mean that. It just means God has a different what? Purpose for you within the body. And ministry is done in the context of the body. So, and the reason is this, there's no room for boasting then, right? If everything I have is from God, he put me in a position I am in the body, then I have nowhere to boast. It's like, and I realize that as I get older, you go on a mission team, I can't do everything. Uh, I was smarter than Jerry. Sorry, Jerry. <laughs> I said, I'm not jumping up dancing the Father Abraham, right? But when I was younger, yes, all right? But you realize you, gotta, you can't, and you were never meant to do everything, right? We do it in the context of the body. And uh, this means that no room for boasting. Uh, he talks about we choose to humble ourselves and to serve where he's put us within the body, knowing that if there is results, and there will be, God's word does not go out void. You notice what he says in verse 7. He ends up saying, so then neither he who plants is anything nor he who waters, but who gives the increase? God gives the, God's in control of the whole thing, all right? And I got to understand this. You minister out of who, I'm, I'm the Lord's. God took me to Ghana, and I'm ministering, at, I'm his. It's not who I, it's not, you know, when I first went over to Ghana, you get excited because I literally would get off a vehicle and I'm talking almost, uh, I mean, hundreds, 500, would run. Pastor Bill, Pastor Bill, you know, the devil thinks it's like, you're somebody. No, you are just a person that God has put at that given time for a given reason, all right, and given ministry. But God gives the increase as he works in the spirit. So we minister out of whose we are. And praise God, we're his, right? And then we minister within a body context, all right? It's ne and this is what God's telling me. It's not what you do, Bill. All right. It's what we do. <laughs> all right. It's like, see, you can go as a team and think, well, I'm the most important. It's, uh, it rises and falls on me. I'm glad it didn't. I could not do what Mimi did. I couldn't do what these other team members did. All right. Ministry is in the context of we. That's what he says in verse eight and nine. All right. He's talking about one plants, one waters. Everybody has a part within the ministry, and each one of them is what? Dependent on the other. You look at verse 10. It says, according to the grace that was given to me to be a wise master builder, I've laid the foundation, another builds on it, but each one let him take heed how he builds on it, all right? So it's like I'm dependent on you. We're all building on the same foundation, and we're all dependent on one another, and our goal then is to promote what? Health, in the case I was over in Ghana, of our group. Because if the group was not healthy, our 10 or 11, we were not going to be able to do the ministry God sent us there, all right, to do. So always careful. I tried to be this time, all right, not to go rogue, <laughs> all right? I have a tendency to want to control everything, all right? And... Uh, <laughs> What are, you, what are you giving me that face for, Lily? <laughs> it's like, but what, you can have a negative effect, am I right? That we have one of our team members, Ken. Uh, and uh, Ken, don't be looking at this, all right? That, <laughs> he would have the same problem. But I'm saying it can have a negative effect on the body. So I had to realize, all right, true ministry is conducted in the context of the body. We, as a team, it's not what Bill did. It's not what Jerry did. It's not what Kevin did. It's as a team of what we did. And this is what Paul is telling these people because they're all in competition. They all want to be number one. There is no number. Well, in fact, there is only one number one. And who is that? Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All right. The last truth he gave me is true ministry is always conducted on the foundation of Jesus Christ. True ministry always conducted on the foundation 
of Jesus Christ. Look at verse 11. No other foundation can anyone lay than what, that which is laid, and that is who? Jesus Christ. You know, we have a tendency to get away from the gospel. Here's how I read the Bible. When I look, probably the Apostle Paul was one of the greatest uh, orators and expositors and preachers, all right, the Christian has ever known, all right? By the way, you know what his theme of preaching everywhere was? Christ, all right? Crucified, buried, resurrected. When he dealt with doctrine, you know when he dealt with doctrine? He dealt with doctrine when he had to correct churches. Look at, look at all the epistles. That was the problem. But when he was preaching, he was lifting up Jesus. We need to understand, see, and I, I said on a mission trip, you're like, you, well, I want to share something new, something God has just showed me and nobody else. You understand there's nothing deeper than Jesus. There's nothing deeper than the gospel of Christ. There is nothing people need more than Jesus Christ in their lives. And I ended up, I started in the beginning, I was coming with all these ideas when I was over there, and finally God told me, you just need to preach the gospel. You just need to take it around and always end on Jesus. And this is what Paul was saying. True ministry, all right, is focused on Christ and the gospel. You can't move from that. All right, true ministry is done on his authority, his power. You cannot, if you read this chapter, do it in your own fleshly wisdom. We like come all these ideas. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. And only that which is built on Jesus Christ will ever endure. You realize that? Uh, we had it, we're talking about sharing the gospel. We're, you get to share the gospel. We share the gospel with the kids there in Ghana. Imagine in heaven and have a child come up to you. All right? And if, I'm hoping my memory is better back when I get to heaven. And if that you're going to meet them and you have the opportunity to share with them, right? I mean, that's what's important. So I'm saying that all of us, whether it's going to Ghana or whether here at Potter's Hand, Bible, we're called to a life of ministry, all right? And if that is true, and this is what God was dealing with me, then I got to ask myself, and this is what God had me do, how are you doing, Bill? <laughs> I mean, real ministry. And I would challenge you to read that chapter, right? It's not just a pastor. It's not just a Sunday school teacher. All of us are called to ministry. And if all of us really had the mindset of that ministry mindset, can you imagine? That's why, how did those few people that gathered in the upper room after Christ's ascension turn the world upside down? Right? If they turned the world upside down, something was going on. They had a different mindset about them. And if we would have the mindset of true ministry... What could God do? And by the way, you think our world needs Christ today? I mean, we, we probably live in one of the great times, really, that it is to be alive if you want to live a life that could really have an effect, all right, or stand out, all right, because you are standing on Christ. I mean, you stand out and shine your light in the world we live in today, you will stand out, and people will notice, and God will draw those to himself whom he calls. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I, I just thank you, dear Lord, for the opportunity that you allow us to come alongside you in ministry. Dear Lord, people who are not worthy, many times we're not even dependable, but then you, dear Heavenly Father, in your, dear Lord, just patience and perseverance, dear Lord, you invite us to come alongside you. We get to see what you do. We got to see what happening there in, in Ghana. We get to see what can happen here, dear Lord, in Apex and our corner of the world here in North Carolina. Open our eyes that we would see what you want to do. And may we, dear Lord, be traveling that path of spirituality, saying no to self, yes to you, May we understand the importance of the body, other believers. May we encourage one another. May we build one another up that we would lift up the name of Jesus Christ, that his name would be lifted, and that men and women and boys and girls would be drawn to you. Thank you for allowing me to share, Pastor Matt. I brought a couple of gifts I wanted to give you and Amy. Back from Ghana, all right? So I didn't know what to get you, all right? 
this could be a bowl for your cereal. No, I don't know. But seriously, this is one of my favorite. I don't know if I gave this to you. My memory's bad. This is a, a Ghanaian praying man, all right? This is one of my favorite ones that you end up reminding prayer. And I like this, Amy, personally. And I'd, I wouldn't wear it as a man, but, <laughs> but uh, I'm the... But I appreciate your support and encouragement, guys, and God bless you. Get the closing prayer, all right? So this week, challenges. There's ministry out there. People are hurting. Am I right? And our ministry is the minister hope. And hope is spelled J-E-S-U-S. All right? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you, dear Lord, for the trip that we completed, what we were able to do. I thank you for the support, dear Lord, we felt from this church, the prayers that we felt. I thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for that. I thank you, dear Lord, for what you allowed us to see that was done. The encouragement, dear Lord, we gave, what you were able to do through us. And we pray as we planted seeds and as we watered seeds over there in Ghana that you would give the increase, that those boys and girls of Jesus would tarry grow up to be young men and young women, leaders in the church, that they would serve you. They would lift up the name of Christ there in Ghana. Dear Lord, that again their faith, dear Lord, would give direction to that country. And may we be challenged also here in our country that may we never be ashamed of our Lord and Savior. And may we stand on our faith, proclaim our faith, live our faith. And I pray, dear Lord, that you would give us a glimpse of what you are doing. Watch over us, keep us safe as we go our separate ways. For I pray in Jesus' most precious name. And all God's people said, Amen. God bless.